Hello everyone! Welcome back to RPG Maker! As a reminder, we are playing a sample game that is included in RPG Maker, that game being called Gobbly. It is an RPG starring a goblin named Gobbly. And this goblin is living in an RPG world, and he lives as a random encounter who has to fight warriors and stuff and let the warriors win to give him experience and stuff. And Gobbly is kind of tired of this and wants to be a boss. During his adventure, Gobbly met a cartoon hole in the wall named Mark. And Mark is a stationary character in this world. However, Mark is kind of bored with his job and wants to learn to take pride in this job of his being a stationary character. And along the way, we decide to go visit a retired castle guard who supposedly used to take pride in being a stationary character, but as it turns out, he's nothing but a bitter old man who has lost his pride. So we gave up on that castle guard and are now at this castle to visit a castle guard who is not retired. By the way, if you're thinking that the bitter old man over here is going to have some story arc in which he starts to feel better about being retired, no. That, that's not going to happen. We're actually never going to see him again. He's introduced as a bitter old man, and that's all he is. Now, before we go into this castle, I'm just going to go ahead and save real quick because I want to demonstrate the fact that even though we loaded this game and the time says I've been playing for an hour and 15 minutes, if I save the game, it's going to tell us that I've only been playing for one minute. Because apparently, RPG Maker does not load your time whenever you continue a game, such as I am now. It's kind of weird that. By the way, this castle here, I mistakenly said that it was the hardest dungeon in the game, and I kind of misspoke. This is actually the first difficulty spike in the game. The hardest dungeon in the game is, appropriately enough, the final dungeon. Still though, this is going to be kind of painful, so ahead of time, I have looked up where I need to be going through this dungeon so that I can just go ahead and skip straight to the treasures, because these guys are going to be kind of painful, especially the ghosts, as you are about to see. In fact, Gobbly, go ahead and start attacking the ghosts while Mark does some damage control here. Crowd control, I should say. 6 damage, 9 damage, 7 damage. And they got plenty of health. The ghost is definitely the most dangerous enemy here though, because the ghost can cast a magic spell. I forget what the spell is called, but the spell causes like 10 damage. In an RPG Maker 1, there is no real magic defense. If a spell causes 10 damage, it's always going to cause 10 damage. Assuming you're not like wearing an accessory that reduces magical damage. Now, there actually is a magic defense stat in RPG Maker, which I might as well go ahead and go over right now. If we go into status, we can see that we have a couple of magic defensive options, in fact. First, there's magic defense, in which case Gobbly has nine. There's also the magic guard option down there. That option down there is for the accessories I mentioned, which would reduce damage from magic attacks. This game doesn't have any, so that option is actually going to go unused. In regards to the magic defense option, it's nine, and, well, magic defense in RPG Maker has nothing to do with defense from magic, Rather, it's resistance to status afflictions such as poison. And, um, unfortunately, 9 points is pretty much nothing. It's on a percentage basis. So, um, in order for magic defense to be effective, it would be ha have to be uh, way higher because at 9 points, that's basically 0.09% resistance. Whereas if it were like a thousand, that'd be 10% resistance. Red berry, healing item, good. Probably gonna want a few of those as we go along through here. Oh, here's some more enemies. I believe spirits also have that magic spell I am concerned about. 
but I'm gonna do the same strategy as before. Goblin's gonna focus on the ghost. Mark's gonna go after the group over there. That's the spell. Oof. Uh oh, and critical hits. And as the spirits over there have helpfully demonstrated, guarding does not reduce damage from magic attacks. Thankfully, as far as their physical attacks go, at this point I'm at a decent level, so they're not too strong. Still kind of dangerous, but nothing terribly to get concerned about. That said, I am going to want to do a little bit of healing after this fight, just in case. Oh, so the mummies appropriately have some decent defense on them. Except, of course, when you do a critical hit. Oh, another level! That's actually good. So, Gobbly is at level 10 now, along with Mark, but Gobbly is more important because I decided to look up what Gobbly's... Boy, that is not a super good healing spell. I decided to look up what level Gobbly has to be in order to unlock his next job class, and as it turns out, it's level 10, so I actually could go back and get myself that job class upgrade right now. But I think at the very least I'm going to go ahead and get through the first level of this dungeon here. I'm gonna try to make the other ghosts fall asleep. Unfortunately could not do that before it attacked, but thankfully it missed. By the way, the reason I was able to look up the information on Gobbly's job classes is because RPG Maker allows you to actually edit this game. You can load it up, make some changes to it if you want, you can look up everything that's in it, and so I have looked up a bunch of stuff that's in it so that I can basically know what I'm talking about when I'm explaining things in this game. Okay, there's three treasure chests on this floor, I believe. I'm gonna have to double back to get that one. What are your other spells, Gobbly? Oh wait, I used up all your magic on that healing spell. Um, after this fight then, I'll probably want to consider... ...getting, um... ...getting Gobbly's MP back up. I got a few MP healing items on hand. And by the way, the other reason why this particular dungeon is kind of difficult, not only because some of the monsters have magic spells, but also because of the encounter rate. It'll be more obvious as we go along, but the encounter rate here kinda sucks. Especially given that we're dealing with a maze. Which is why I decided to look up the directions to get through this maze and go straight to the treasures, so that we would not be spending too much time here going into dead ends. Along the way to get Jobby or Gobbly's job class upgrade, I'll probably buy Mark another weapon so that he can be a little bit more helpful during physical attacking. Because I see no reason to use magic attacks whenever it's only going to target one enemy. Oh, before I forget... There we go. Another red berry wouldn't hurt. Alright, next fight, Gobbly will be able to help in the magic department. And it's a good thing too, because it's a group of these three guys. So let's see here, Falling Star, Ignite is not actually going to be useful at this point in the game. We could boost all our attacks by 35, that would actually be pretty dang helpful. But uh, Gobbly's MP is so low, I think I'll just stick with it, Falling Star and follow up with Fury.
Yeah, the magic spells are definitely the bigger threat here. Because it's not actually going to take long before we level up enough that these monsters start causing, like, no damage. With their physical attacks, at least. I'm kind of curious what my odds of running here are. I should totally check that out after one more heal. It's probably not a good idea to attempt running, because running in RPGs tends to be not very helpful. Well, unless we get a first attack, in which case we're guaranteed to flee. In which case, of course I'm going to take advantage of that. And we got a Forest Leaf. That's the thing that permanently increases health? Yeah. Uh, in this case... Oh, who could use it more? I mean, Gobbly has less health, but what about defensive stuff? In other words, guard. Guard being defense plus equipment buffs. Yeah, they're about the same, so we'll just give the extra health with Gobbly. Alright, time to make my way back out of this place. And we're ambushed. Thankfully, they didn't both attack. And we were able to successfully flee. If we were unable to successfully flee, then what would happen is they'd all get to attack. Much like they do whenever they're ambushing us. That's slightly annoying. Although, when we're getting ambushed, it's kind of interesting that they don't necessarily all attack. Okay, since we're definitely on our way out of here... I'm going to use up the rest of my magic. Cutting it a little close, but I think we're actually going to be okay. Yeah, we got this. Surprisingly still alive. Well, as alive as a zomb as a mummy could be anyway. Uh, I was hoping to get out of here before we gain that level. Cause the job class upgrade that we're gonna get gobbly includes some stat buffs and well we just missed out on some stat buffs for one level. That's a slight bummer. I don't know, do I actually want to go all the way back to Gobbly's hometown right now? It is a bit of a trek, and I kind of feel like it might be better to stick with what I got. I don't know. Nah, the stat bus will be very useful. Let's go ahead and head on down to get those stat buffs now. Try to make this quick. Again, they really should have allowed there to be some sort of shortcut so that we wouldn't have to trek all this way. Or at the very least, give us a teleport spell. That would have been nice. As far as I'm aware, there's no teleport spell though. Basically, if there were a teleport spell, the way it would work is any place we've clicked on on the world maps, we'd be able to teleport to. Alright, let's get that upgrade. Out of curiosity, what magic spells did we learn recently? Right, we learned that bravery spell before. What did you learn? It's hard to say because his spells are learned out of order. Enfeeble? Might be enfeeble. Guard minus 20. That is actually a pretty useful spell. Oh, wait. Is it? Is it? No, it's not that useful. It only targets one enemy. Maybe if we were fighting a boss. Alright. Gobbly? It is time for you to become a King Goblin. Not even halfway through this adventure and already he's become King. So, the King Goblin. 
I've actually wrote down what all its buffs include. So I will go ahead and read them off. First off, as a King Goblin, Gobbly has a chance of getting us the first attack in battle. Higher odds, that is. And in regards to stats, he gains an extra 7 points in strength, no extra defense, 4 extra points in stamina, as in max HP, 1 extra point in intelligence, which is max MP, 1 extra in agility, which affects turn order, 1 extra luck, which affects evasion, and one extra point in magic defense, which as I've explained before, is resistance to status afflictions. And of course, that one extra point amounts to 0.01% extra resistance. The people who wound up making this sample game apparently did not get the memo on how magic defense actually works. In fact, the people who translated RPG Maker also didn't get the memo, considering they mistakenly label it Magic Defense when it's anything but. As for Gobbly's next job class upgrade, that doesn't happen until level 20. And Mark doesn't get any job class upgrades. He is always going to be a wall hole. Which is actually kind of depressing, considering he wants to be something more than a wall hole. But, hey, we're only talking about mechanically, so whatever. By the way, we're not going to encounter any in the forest, because we're in the forest. But, plane fairies... ...have a chance of dropping a rare weapon called a Rusty Club. It's not a especially great weapon. It basically has an attack of 7, only hits a single enemy. Alright, let's go ahead and see about a better weapon for Mark. Ooh, we can get a battle dart. In fact, we have exactly what we need for that. That's a um, good 10 points extra over the war dart, which means it's an extra 5 points of damage. Sounds good to me. So, Mark might not get a job class upgrade, but hey... He gets new weapons, at least. Sell off his old one. Uh, while I'm at it. Another blueberry. Possibly... Yeah, an extra few red berries as well. Alright, back to the castle we go. Does that castle have an actual name? As far as I'm aware, no it doesn't. but it's not really important to the story. Not our story, at the very least. Actually, it's kind of a shame they didn't give this castle a more interesting name. I mean, we got, like, Common Town, which is, like, a reference to it being a common RPG town, and then Common Plain, same sort of situation. They couldn't call this Common Castle? Or maybe like... Dungeon Castle? Oh, there's that whole extra chance of first strike coming into play. Good, we can quickly move on to our next little thing here. Except we can't because these guys have not decided to allow us a first strike. I could probably run away from them, but we do kind of need the experience. For a while, the game is gonna kind of ease up on the difficulty, especially now that we've got job class upgrade and a better weapon for Mark. But it's definitely going to get difficult later on. Oi, that final dungeon. And apparently having the higher chance of a first strike does not increase or decrease your odds of getting ambushed. There are various RPGs that have such a thing. Lower the odds of being, like, back attacked and that sort of thing. RPG Maker has no such feature. 
All right, let's get up to the second floor, and the second floor is especially mazy. Again, though, I already know exactly where to go. Oh, by the way, the second floor has different enemies, which I will show off later because I can flee. But not from these guys. All right, we got elves. We also got critical hits, so these guys might be going down pretty quickly. Ah, oh, yeah, here we go. Already on this second floor, the enemies are actually weaker than the enemies on the first floor. The only real threat here is that elves can cast a sleep spell, which we might not actually get to see. So, who knows. The difficulty spike I mentioned earlier mainly applies to the first floor when you first encounter this place because of the monsters who can cast that high level spell damage. Alright, these guys definitely have decent health. I want to consider using magic on them next time. I don't think the Harpies or the lizard men know any particular spells. But don't quote me on that. Alright, I made a wrong turn slightly here. The treasure that I want first is right over here. Did I mention the encounter rate here is kind of high? By the way, the encounter rate here is kind of high. Well, that's just care of the lizard men. Oh no! Got a decent amount of health. His attack ain't much to speak of. By the way, in regards to the buffs to Gopli stats, I speak of buffs per level. Starting now, he's going to get all of those buffs I mentioned every level. We're getting a lot of money here. That's good because we'll be able to afford some of the more expensive equipment soon. As a reminder, one of Gobbly's weapons costs 10,000 gold. While I have the chance, I just want to say that I think it's interesting that the Harpies are kind of topless. And as far as I'm aware, I can't reach over to RPG Maker's case right now, but I'm pretty sure RPG Maker has an E for everyone rating. I guess the Harpies just get to get away with it because there's no visible nipples. And they're not necessarily human. That also helps even though their chest is very much human. Oh boy, again I say, the encounter rate here is kind of obnoxious. We're gonna be gaining levels kind of quickly here, at this rate. We're also gonna have to go into our first episode break here in a few minutes. It is so weird that the enemies on the second floor are easier than the enemies on the first. I mean, one could argue it's because I leveled up. But still, you'd think they would have accounted for that. Alright, all those battles just to get a blueberry. Yes, I'm taking advantage of the ability to flee. I do need levels for the long run, but I also kind of want to save time when the game gives me a free run. And this is unfortunately not a free run. I kind of want to try out some of these other spells again, but when we have a group like this, I might as well just use and attack every one spell. 
wonder when Mark learns his next one. He's got plenty of magic still to learn. I think. Well, at the very least, there is still one other spell, damaging spell, that is, that he can learn. And it's a pretty good one. I should heal. No, level up. So, all those extra buffs for Gobbly are coming into play now. An extra 7 strength on that level up. And this is in addition to his already existing stat growth. So, he should cause a pretty decent amount of damage the next time he gets the chance to attack. Meanwhile, Mark has so much MP, might as well use the magic. Well, there was the slumber spell. It apparently does not have a spell animation. You know, I think my whole thing with the difficulty spike of this place is past memories of this game. When I was a little, little less experienced with RPGs, more importantly, less experience with this game, because I must have beaten this game like a half dozen times already. So I'm kind of used to how it plays. It was definitely really hard in this place the first time I played it. But not so much anymore. Now, if you guys were to play it, you probably would have a little bit more difficulty than I do, since you uh, aren't so experienced playing this game. Nor so, I assume. Most of you, at least, probably are not that experienced playing this game. You know what? I'm definitely glad that I went back to get a, uh... Oh, that's healing item. That's a good healing item. I'm definitely glad I went back to get the evasion, the first thing thing. Because it would take so long to fight all these battles if I didn't have the first strike. That said, I was kind of hoping to make it up to our eventual goal here, before the end of the first episode. But that's not seeming to be the case. Can I at least make it to the stairs? Helps. And that doesn't. Well, whatever. I need to go into the first episode break. I'll get back to where the path was branching. I have no idea what the deal with that black box is that appears, by the way. It's the box that displays when somebody subscribes or donates bits. But lately, it's been kind of glitching out whenever I switch scenes. Anyway, we'll be right back. I'll go ahead and kill these guys off camera, and we'll get to where the pa path was branching, and that sort of thing. And we'll resume climbing the castle. We're actually really close to the end of this dungeon.